Uh, we're here uh, at the Book Mouse here in Ottawa, yeah. Illinois, and this is uh, my friend and fellow writer Denise Unland. She's uh, she's written a she's gotten a book published, and uh, why don't you tell us all about it and what it is? Our Bryony is the uh, first in the series. It's a story of a seventies teen girl that trades her blood with a Victorian vampire for a trip back into time, and I released the first book in December. And book two will be released in about a month. And it's the story, as I get, a 70s teen girl, and her name is Melissa. And she ends up um, in a small fishing village, a fictional fishing village in Michigan. And after her father's death, and she's kind of lonely and she's isolated. And during the course of a school report, she becomes very obsessed with a former village girl from the 19th century who had married a famous musician and composer. And she does a school report on this girl and uh, finds out that the um, there is a vampire lurking around and she is able to trade her blood with him in order to go back into time and live as if she was born. That's very unusual. You never. That's uh, that's an interesting angle to the the vampire story. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of a of a vampire taking his victims back in time with him before. You know, I uh, uh, I grew up enjoying pre twentieth century vampire stories, and while a lot of my friends were reading teen magazines growing up, I was reading archaeological expeditions into Transylvania and things like that, and the historical Neat. Dracula and just the you know, traditional vampire lore. And actually, vampires being able to time travel, you know that that phrase, the dead travel fast. You know, enables them to kind of span eras a little bit because remember they're not alive. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I decided to use that uh, as part of the plot of Bryony, and also um, the part that I really liked. It was uh, it was many years ago, it was 1985, and I was uh, I was expecting my third child, and I wasn't feeling so well, and I was laying on the couch reading from a book of short vampire stories, and. I liked some of the air of romanticism that's on the older stories. And I had this idea because, you know, teen girls are very susceptible with kind of, you know, getting enamored with glitter as opposed to gold, of having a girl falling in love with this, um, this aura of larger than life without seeing the real picture as far as what's behind it. So this is more along right. the lines of a traditional vampire story. Correct. They, he doesn't sparkle. He does not sparkle. Okay. Only in her mind. Ah, I see. And it's you're coming online. out with you're your on. you're coming out with the second book. The second book comes out in a month, and actually we're releasing a special edition of that book. Um, and some of that is a is a tribute and thank you to to a fan who had done a concept cover for me. And so we're going to be releasing that particular book with that cover and without the interior illustrations that this one has with some extra additional appendixes that will not be in the official copy of Visage when we release it at the end of the year. Okay. And you also, you, in, I've read your book. I have read it. And um, you go into great detail about certain aspects of the Victorian time period. And one of the aspects that... that caught my attention was the, the descriptions of of the various uh, foods was, that they had then. Because no there's a you know there's a wedding and there's a reception and you describe all the different uh, foods that they have at the wedding and you, you actually came out with a with a cookbook. Yeah, and you know, the, the cookbook, uh, the inspiration from that came from, from a, a, a couple of things. Uh, but to answer your first question, you know, back in the 19th century and even in the 70s, you know, a lot of celebration took place around, you know, food. And especially for a teen girl of the 70s going back into time, you know, one of the things that would be very unfamiliar for her would be food. I mean, we're not talking about pizza and cheeseburgers or anything that she might know. We're talking about some very strange things like stuffed pigeons and boiled calves heads and, you know, I mean, you know, things that would seem normal. So she has this whole Cinderella concept of what the Victorian era is and this Cinderella concept of what vampires are. And the reality is, of course, you know, not quite as pretty as she's, you know, encountering just even foods that she doesn't like. And then the other is I have an acquaintance who put together a fundraising cookbook all by herself for, for the March of Dimes just because she likes that organization. And she's been selling it for years and has raised uh, almost $7,000 for the organization. She just takes it to craft fairs. She goes wherever. And as I was editing uh, Bryony, I realized there were so many food references in there we could, we could do the same. 
and I approached Big Brothers Big Sisters of Bull and Grundy counties because there's a very nice underlying subplot where Melissa's younger brother is being mentored by the village maintenance man um, over cooking. He likes cooking of all things and, and he's teaching her little brother how to cook and there's you know some fun metaphors because Melissa's food and Brian's learning to, about food in a very healthy way so I approached the organization and see if they would like to be the recipient of any profits from the cookbook. And we had a lot of fun uh, researching the foods and, and, and getting submissions. And, and, and some of the Victorian recipes came from um, people. There's, um, there's an author in Homer Glenn. She's in her 80s. And she gave me recipes that belonged to her grandmother and great-grandmother. So they came straight out of the Victorian era with things like measurements from using the eggshells. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. They use eggshells to measure ingredients? And this, this particular recipe she gave me, you use the eggs and then you use so many eggshells full of water and, and things to add into the cake. They, they didn't have like measurement cups or anything? You know, it isn't so much that they didn't have it, and, and this is true, I have found just even in, in doing stories for the Herald News, you know, when, when you know, they're trying to get Grandma's Petitza recipe, they didn't do it. You know, it's kind of like, you know, the flour came up so high in the bowl, you threw in a pinch of this and a bit of that, and they, and they look, mix these things up pretty quickly. So then trying to get, you know, Grandma to write her recipes down, it's like, oh gosh, I don't know. I know that, you know, you throw in a handful of this and a dash of that. Really? That's, that's actually the way it was, just a handful of this and a dash of that. Correct. That's interesting. I've, I've heard those phrases before, but I didn't know they were actually used in actual recipes. Mm -hmm. uh, so some of the ones from the Victorian era are not quite as exact in the cookbook. And then we have a couple of other things too. We have a five cent candle line that's based on the book. We have a Bryony scent, we have a purple rose scent, we have a Sue's Diner scent, uh, a Simon's Wood scent, and a Lake Munson scent. Yes, I was, I was about to ask you about the candles. Mm -hmm. So we do have that, and we also have a CD of original piano music. Yes. Because our vampire is a, um, is a fictional 19th century pianist and musician. And there is a theme song in the book that he uh, created as a wedding present for his wife, and her name is Bryony. And my daughter, when she was putting together the website, felt it needed the theme song and went looking for a pianist and composer, and found that in James Onahan, who is a um, Hammond police officer. And that's what he does. He writes romantic piano music. He already had four CDs out, and he offered not only to do the theme song, but an entire CD of music that's downloadable from his website, and it's the best love compositions of John Simons, exactly the same record that Melissa takes out of the library. So it's oh. where fiction and reality kind of met each other a little bit. So it, it's only available online, then? It is only available online. He does not have a hard copy of the, of the CD yet. Okay. What's, what's the website? We can find that. That is, uh, we actually, you can you can um, find a link through the BrianeSeries.com website, or you can go directly to James, which is JamesOnahan.com, and it's also available on iTunes. Okay, excellent. And when's the, what, is, did, you, did I ask you when the second book was coming out? Uh, the release date for book two is December 1st. And what's that going to be called? That is called Visage, and Visage means appearance. And uh, so things are not quite, you know, what they seem in book two, and uh, where book one weaves between a lot of different eras. Book two has um, two very narrow tracks, what you, what you think you see and what's really going on. Hello, uh, this is the book box. Yes, there's help? always a difference. There is always a difference. Yes. Hello, this and those is the book two box. run parallel through the entire book. Yes, very oh, Donald, good. I can't talk right now. It's I'm crazy busy here. Here's, she's Denise Unland, so, and the name of her book is Bryony, the with the second book coming out, Visage. And you can, pick the, you can find those on Amazon. And, and the Bryony site, what is the Bryony so site? BryonySeries.com, B-R-Y-O-N-Y, S-E-R-I-E-S.com. And she's also on my, uh, she's also part of my uh, Joliet, right on Joliet writers group. We meet uh, every other Thursday at the Joliet Library on Black Road. And... So if you'd like to write, yes. if you have an interest in writing, if you just want to hear what other people are writing, come on out. We exactly. are the first and third Wednesday of the month at 6 30. How many do we have? Yes. Be sure to check her out. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you.